What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be going through the scene and compositing breakdown of the shot that shows the man in the hazmat shoot with the flocks of crows in the background that we've used in our Spiderfy add-on for Blender trailer. I'll be going through the general setup inside of Blender and then showing you the various layers and passes that we've used inside of After Effects to get our final result. As usual, this breakdown video is not really a tutorial, but just a scene breakdown to give you some of the ideas of the concepts used to create these shots. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our final scene setup here. It's a fairly basic scene for this shot. As you can see, if I uh, pull away from camera view here, we just have a very basic camera and we haven't actually even 3D tracked this specific shot because it's fairly static. It's just a slight push in and uh, I figured that the flocks of crows that we were going to add to the shot were going to be far enough in the background that the 3D tracking wouldn't matter very much. And uh, what I've done here is uh, I've just imported our footage as a background image in the camera tab so I can get a general idea of where I can add the flocks of crows to our scene and the timing of the general shot. And uh, then what I've done here is I've used the uh, crow preset in our Spiderfy add-on and then I've added a total of four different crow Boyd systems here, each with their own separate goal so that the birds flock in a very specific way. And uh, as you can see here, if I go to uh, view animation of our preview, you can see what we're getting here in real time. We have uh, some empties here, which are our goal objects for the various Boyd particle systems. I have one main uh, Boyd particle system here in the foreground for that specific crow element. And then I have the three other crow systems in the background here, each approaching their own goal object. And then of course I've animated those goal objects as well to uh, create a little bit more variation in their movement. And uh, super simple setup here. And as you can see here, if I go out here, you can see that I'm just emitting crows from just off camera with our Boyd particle emitters from Spiderfy and uh, if I select one of the empties here which are the goal objects you can see that I've actually animated their movement over time to make our particle systems that contain the crows move a little bit more organically and as you can see here that is pretty much it for this scene as far as recreating the environment of the live action shot in these specific renders I didn't actually do that much all I did was add a basic HDRI in our world settings that matched the general look of our background footage here as you can see this is the sky from our hdri that we're using and this is all that's lighting our crows that we've rendered out and i've also rendered out each of these crow systems on their own separate layer so that we can composite them separately and have a little bit more control over that compositing process inside of after effects as far as exporting goes as usual i've uh, exported them in an opening xr sequence with an alpha channel so that we have a good format for visual effects compositing and for the most part i've rendered at 32 samples with a little bit of denoising in our render and uh, as usual enabled our seed stopwatch for some noise variation and that gave us enough to work with once I added some blur and color correction inside of After Effects. Anyways, inside of After Effects is where this shot was really brought to life. So I'll just go through each layer one by one and show you what I've done here. And the first render that I added to this shot inside of After Effects was our foreground crows render. So I've uh, just imported that into our scene here. I uh, didn't really need to track it or anything since our shot is relatively static, even though there's a little push in, it didn't really make that much of a difference in the parallax of the camera as far as these crows are concerned. So I added them to the scene. I've added a little bit of color correction to blend them into the shot a bit better. I've added two different effects here. I've added some camera lens blur to match the crows to the blur of our background a little bit better. So as you can see here, if I enable that, just uh, blending into our background a bit so they're not quite as sharp. And the next thing that I added for these foreground crows was just a curves effect to lift them a little bit so that they weren't quite as dark. As you can see, if I uh, disable it, their black levels are a little bit low. So I've just added that curve setting to bring them up and match the lighting a bit better. After adding these crows that were close to the camera, I started adding the background crow renders. So as you can see here, I've just added our three different crow particle systems that we've rendered out and uh, placed them in three different spots here. I'll go ahead and disable our foreground crows really quick. And as you can see here in our effects tab, I have two very similar effects on these background crows as well. I've used our camera lens blur. If we zoom in here, you can see that I've used some uh, camera lens blur to again match the blur of our clouds in the background. So just a touch of blur there. And then I've also used a tint effect to tint these crows 
macros the color of our sky so that it blends into the environment a bit more. So as you can see, if I enable the tint, it's just a slight blending of our crows into the background that uh, helps it match the environment a bit better in addition to our HDRI that we've used inside of Blender to light the actual 3D render. One of the reasons I use the tint effect on the background crows and not the foreground crows is because as things go further off into the distance, there's generally a little bit more atmosphere over those objects, which tends to lift the shadows a little bit and uh, blend it into the environment a bit more. So generally when you put a visual effects element closer to the camera, you don't have to lift the shadows as much and blend it into the environment with mist and uh, that tinting effect that I've just used. But uh, anyways, after adding our four main crow systems here and placing them where I wanted them in the scene, the next thing that I did was uh, added some rotor layers to make sure that they didn't overlap our man on the dock here or our fence here. And this is just to integrate our crows into the environment a bit better so that they don't overlap our man in the foreground here or our fence in the foreground. So uh, what I've done here is, as you can see, I've just uh, rotoscoped out our man here frame by frame with our uh, rotor brush tool inside of After Effects. And then I've uh, overlaid that on top of our footage so that those crows didn't overlap our man in the uh, final composite. And I've done the same thing with the fence here on the right side of our frame because I had some of the crows in this foreground crows element come pretty close to the water here and overlap with the fence a bit. So uh, we definitely didn't want them to be on top of this fence here in the foreground. So we've just rotoscoped out this fence here frame by frame as well. And uh, finally, to integrate this shot into the scene a little bit more, I've added some reflections of the birds that we've added to our shot in the body of water here. So as you can see here, if I uh, turn on this bird reflections pre-composite, you can see that I've simply uh, duplicated each bird element and then I flipped it so that it's uh, the exact opposite of what you see in the sky here. And uh, then I've combined all of those different bird elements that I've flipped into one pre-composite so that I can, uh, you know, move them around uh, all as one and adjust them a little bit easier. And then what I've done is uh, I've added some effects to them to blend them into the water a bit. So obviously when there is a reflection, depending on what the water looks like in the scene, you may need to adapt that element to blend it into the water a bit. Luckily in this case, the water is pretty calm here. So all I needed to do was uh, just add some basic camera lens blur to blur the reflection a little bit. As you can see here, the clouds in our reflection are kind of blurry compared to the sky. So trying to use that to kind of gauge the amount of blur to add to the reflection. Then uh, I've also added that same tint effect to kind of blend those reflections into the sky a little bit more. And then also, as you can see here, you can notice that the clouds on the reflection are a little bit darker compared to the clouds that you see in the uh, sky here. So what I've done here is I've just added a basic curves effect to actually darken the uh, crow element in the water as well. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's just darkening that crow element to integrate it into that reflection a little bit better. And finally, once I color corrected the uh, reflection element, I've also used a little mat here from our live action footage that uh, isolated the part of the image where the crows would reflect off of the water. Obviously the crows wouldn't be reflected in this area where the fence is reflected as they would be blocked by the fence from reflecting there. And uh, same thing here for the foreground. This uh, fence here obviously would prevent us from seeing the reflection where the water is right here. So uh, what I've done is just create a nice little reflection mat. I've used the uh, color range node here to isolate just the parts of the image that would be reflecting our crow elements. And after creating that mat with our footage under our bird reflections pre-comp, I've used the alpha inverted mat data for our reflection mat that we created and uh, use that to isolate where we want to see the reflection on the water. And uh, I hope that makes sense. You could also, you know, do a very basic rotoscoping job to isolate these bird elements as well. But uh, anytime I can get away with using a uh, easier mat tool such as color range and uh, you know using the data from the footage itself to isolate a certain part of the footage that we want to see reflection. Um, I always do that whenever I can instead of rotoscoping something out. Finally, to finish off this shot, I've just added a basic adjustment layer for some color correction. I've used Adobe's Lumetri Color to uh, just blend it into the scene, add a little bit of contrast, and uh, give it a nice film look for our final shot. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to get an idea on how I composited some of these elements together. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.